This is White Oak Tree, and we did a root collar excavation on this 60 days ago, and the owner has now called us back and wants us to do some root pruning and an evaluation of how the uh, root collar has been uh, has affected the health of this tree, and it gives us a perfect chance to explain to you the four types of roots that you're going to encounter when you do a root collar excavation. The four types of roots that you're going to see will be anchors. These are the big boys that serve no other purpose than holding the tree up and keeping it from falling over. Not much of a biological purpose. You have, in addition to that, a scaffold root. This is a nice big scaffold root that comes off the side of it. And uh, off of this scaffold root comes a secondary root. You can see this one here. And because of the compacted soil conditions and the covered and smothered conditions, this root has uh, um, now girdled and come over the anchors of the other. We uh, see some strangling knit in this area right here and we're probably going to cut it right here. And as an example of the third type, you've got the secondary root here and the fibrous roots that come off of it. And you can see more examples of those as I pull them up from around the tree. Now we're gonna head around this tree and show you more examples of these roots. And this is exactly what you're gonna find when you start your excavation. We're working our way around this tree. I'm showing you the four types of roots, anchors, uh, scaffold, secondary, and fibrous roots. And this is exactly the kind of thing that you're gonna find when you do your root collar excavations. And so let me go down to the collar now. And you're gonna see on this side where we've got a secondary root that grew straight up in the air and that was cut off with a mower. And there are some additional beginnings of what would become secondary roots and fibrous roots growing off of it that you see here. Here's some more right here. And as I come around, here's another one that grew up straight into the air. You can see when I pull on it, how I'm going to pull it on up out of the ground so I can demonstrate. There you go. This is a, a anchor, scaffold. This is the beginning of a secondary. And here's your uh, 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 fibrous roots here that uh, contain all of the, uh, this has uh, got a grass end on it, another grass end on that. But here are the fibrous roots in, root ends right here. And that's where your mycorrhiza fungus, your uh, trichoderma bacteria, and all of the microbiology inhabit this tree and begin to convert the uh, 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 microbiology from the soil to the internal system of the tree. And it happens all right here in this system here. And what we're going to do is clean this up as we go around the tree and uh, make this a little bit uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And uh, we got enough root uh, coverage out in this area to where it will not make a difference if we do more pruning. So let's work our way around and see. Alright, we're on the other side of the tree now. We have an anchor. There's a little bit of a split right here that happens when the water gets in there and it freezes and falls and as it expands it cracks, but we're, we're going to be able to heal that by exposing it to air and light. This is the anchor. Here is a good example of a secondary root, or excuse me, a scaffold root. And off of the scaffold root, we've got these secondary roots. And off the secondary roots, we've got these fibrous roots that are growing. And this is a perfect example of what you're going to find when you have compacted conditions. There's a driveway, circular driveway surrounding this. The roots grew out, met uh, opposition and soil compaction turned back in and are growing back in around the collar and is inhibiting the uh, development of this tree long term. As you can see, we've got a pretty clean area. Here's a rock that's literally grown into it 
that we're not going to be able to uh, get loose, but that rock is a good example of what people used to do with the trees as they, here's another one, and they uh, throw them in around the bottom of the tree. Red clay, it's not too badly compacted. We're able to pull it apart, and so soil conditions are not that critical. The covered and smothered collar is. And so here's the last part of a secondary root, a scaffold root, and the fibrous roots that have all improperly grown up into the collar. And we're going to be able to clean all of that up as we go around here and prune that out. All right, on you. see where this um, secondary, this uh, sca uh, scaffold root has cut into the bark of this tree and the reason we cut it, there's another rock that grew into it right there, there's another rock that we're not going to be able to move, but you can see where it was cutting in and there's some decay right there that we hope to be able to eliminate by exposing it to air and light. I didn't cut this anymore right here because there's a nice, here's a uh, scaffold root, secondary root, and some fibrous roots that are growing off of it, growing up. But I'm going to leave that there for the time being. If the owner is dissatisfied with it, they'll be able to give us some instructions on a uh, subsequent visit to come back. And I'm just going to continue around here. I'm going to get this out of the way. As you can see, there's not actually a lot of cutting that's necessary. Uh, it varies tree to tree, but in this particular case, we don't have too bad a situation. I'm gonna bring my tools around with me. Cut that, pull it up out of the way. We didn't really like doing that, but it was so far up on the surface that it posed uh, a hazard and we had to uh, had to get rid of this and we'll continue our, our excavation got some we've just had a rain it's a little bit muddy I prefer to have mud rather than dust Got to be careful not to bury your tools. Got this one, this one. As you can see, they're growing straight up, which means that they have been turned in the wrong direction. And the owner just couldn't live with the idea of these roots just hanging out there. And so we're going to neaten them up make it a little bit easier to maintain a 
All right, I'm gonna bring them on around here. As you can see, we've got a uh, scaffold root growing over this anchor, but it's not cutting it too badly yet, so we're probably, uh, no, I think I'm gonna go ahead, and while I'm here, just go ahead and get that one loose. You can see here, got it there, and let me see, I have a, a chisel, I think, somewhere. Let me see, I'm gonna pull this out this way. And, and as you can see, we had some, uh, some, some cutting of this anchor right here, and we won't let roots do that. Anchors are all about the uh, uh, structural stability of a tree, and when it starts cutting into an anchor like that, you're going to have a short life around the fifth element protocol because we're just not going to uh, allow you to stay there very long. It's going to compromise the structural stability of the tree, and that's really one of the key questions that we're answering when we do a root collar for this customer, and he wanted to know, since this tree is so big and so potentially dangerous, will it fall on him? And in order to answer that, we had to evaluate these anchors, which we have done. There's a nice scaffold root off of which secondary roots grow. We've got some turning back in right here. We're gonna clean these up. These are doing real good. On you. Got this one root here. do is I'll clean this out with my air tool and make a make a cleaner cut on this thing. Let's see. There we go. As you can see, I need to get the uh, dirt out of this cavity, this sinus this area between the roots and as you can see it was starting to cut in and once again you can see right here especially where it was cutting in and it already started rotting it's even got some termites in there see these termites and the nesting in there we can't allow that to happen to an anchor and the tree has the full ability to heal itself if we'll just expose it to air and light. And what I'm gonna do is come around, get the rest of this junk out of here. And once we finish this up, because as we've uh, said before, rocks gather heat and hold heat. And uh, most of uh, our soil microbiology grows in a, uh, a uh, dark, moist, cool environment. And we need to promote that in order to uh, make this tree as healthy and promote as much root growth as is possible and so there we go we finished up our root pruning we have exposed all of the anchors and uh, we now know that except for a few of the of the uh, of the uh, places that we indicated have problems that uh, this tree is sturdy has good anchors good structural stability and will uh, last this owner a long time as long as we maintain it. We'll go around here and like I say, uh, what you have now is a function of landscaping and cleanup. And so you gotta have rakes. You need to know where to dispose of this. And if there's mulch available, we need to establish a mulch skirt so that we can start, start some topsoil uh, formation and stimulate additional root growth in this area so the tree will stay healthy long term.